Hi, you're watching Lips from Anvil and John the Ninja. You know it. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? It's John the Ninja in the dojo, aka the dojo, aka the John the Ninja Studios. And do I have a good one for you? So many great stories from this band. But let's start where it began for John. 2008. I'm just getting into metal. I bought my ACDC record, bought my Sabbath record. VH1 has a heavy metal classic, but a band had a documentary pop out right after that exposed me to a different side of the music industry. Not only that, but they were a band that inspired the bands I was listening to. So of course I had to hop on. And this band at the time had 12 albums and counting in their story career. The movie and the band's name was Anvil. And though they've been, yeah, they said it's 1978 the band formed, the two prominent and original members, Steve Lips Kudlo and Rob Reiner have been together since 1973. I count that. So that's almost 50 years together as a group. Their first three offerings, Hard and Heavy, Metal on Metal and Fortune Fire are staples and are praised in the heavy metal community. Ahead of their time is an understatement, but their success petered out and they found themselves in the traps of what many musicians call the music industry. And being that they were determined since the age of 14 to keep going, they went on to release slew and plethora of albums. Some of them speed of sound, worth your weight and still going and even more. But the thing that people don't even know is their lead singer was even offered to play with Motorhead, play with Lemmy after their guy left, but his commitment to his friend, the band, and the commitments and promises negotiation-wise he made, made him stay. Their saving grace, and I would say the hard work they put in while they were young, and something else, the kindness they showed a Mr. Sasha Gervasi. The name is synonymous with Steven Spielberg. He was a fan who even wrote it for the band, but he loved them so much, and because of their kindness, he came back to them and offered to do the documentary, which I spoke of, which was seen by 88 million people within the first two years alone and revitalized them with bands such as Metallica, Guns N' Roses, Anthrax, and even more spilling it out how much they love this band. It's an insult to call them the real life Spinal Tap because it's an injustice to the sacrifice and dedication the band has had. Even Ian Anderson of Jeff Toll walked up to Lips and said, because of you guys, I kept going. Ever since then, Anvil has been releasing albums, doing what they love, most importantly, playing music and doing it full time, which was always the goal. Today, I have Lips speaking with me for hyping up not only Imminent Impact, which is on the way, it's gonna be available May 20th, but they're also coming to my hometown Vineland, New Jersey, June 4th, with a couple of my friends, Zenora and Hellion. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Lips. Sir, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> At least better today than I was yesterday. That's a, that's, that's a good thing. And that's the thing I love about you guys. You guys are always positive. You're always on it. And just looking at this, you're in the midst of writing your 20th studio album now as you just released this one. All right, coming out May 20th. Got to remember, people, you got to go buy it. I heard it. it's wonderful. But just years, over 40 years of creating and writing, you've had times where, you know, you'll write a riff and you go, that sounds like this riff. Let me go back to this. Let me, let me go back to this style or something new. And you kept on changing and just re, um, what's another word for redefining Anvil? Have you ever ran into a situation where you plagiarized yourself? How do you keep it new when you write? You don't think about that. You, everything is a new you try to make everything as new as you can. That's all you're thinking. You're not, I don't even know that you're, you don't eventually, you eventually do everything a number of times. Like as far as feel and, and key and, 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 and style, stylization of, it's like, I like to try to think of it. If, if you think about the, the yellow flowers that Van Gogh painted. I think there's like 30, 30 pictures like that. But everybody is all the same picture. No, they're all slightly different, but they're the, they're they're there, right? Well, I'm just saying that as 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 a prime example, there it's and it's the same artist. I like to think of of music as just another expression, as another way of self self expression. So having said that, that's all that, that the music is. So if people are, are are expecting Rembrandt to all of a sudden start painting like Van Gogh, well, you're going to wait. It's not going to happen. And nor would you want it to happen. So, but at the same time, these, these painters are building their reputation on what they're actually doing. 
on what they're actually what they actually created. That becomes their style. That they own it. No one else is doing does that. They do that. That's it. That's what makes it special. That's ultimately what it all is. So it's it's your you it's your 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 personal expression, and you create that style. That's what you do. And you know, so people could say, well, all of this all those paintings are all just people. So what? You know what I'm saying? But 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 the, but the truth the truth is of the matter is art is what it is. Music is what it is. If you expect Anvil to sound like Iron Maiden, you're never going to hear it because that's not what I do. It took me years to hone what I do and to be me and to be proud of what I do and to be proud of being me and to have an understanding what me means. All those, all those different aspects take years to get, years to acquire. And I love how you guys always seem to be ahead of the curve. You know, there's multiple examples. The top two I always get is like, you guys did 666 and then Maiden did Number of the Beast. Or you guys did 13 and then all these other metal bands did 13, Megadeth and Black Sabbath. But there's something to be said with the friendship you've culminated with Rob. It's one of those things where it's like, you guys have been through so much. And even he was quoted in the movie, you know, he's, you're like, listen, I'm going to take us there. And if I, I'm not going to jump off a cliff. And he goes, no, because I'll stop you. You know, you guys have been doing this for so long. You guys have been so close. I was wondering, other than the music, what do you guys have in common? Is it just the music? And that's why your friendship works. Like I have some best friends that we have nothing in common, but one thing, but we will ride and die. That's hard to completely answer. You could, you could, you could say it's a classic, classic codependency. You could say that on a, on a psychological level, you could easily say that, you know, it, it's, it's what is codependency. You, you, it, it's exactly what that, what that precisely is. It's like you, that's the person I'm doing. I, I need to do business with whether I love or hate them. Right. Mm -hmm. But it works. Right, so you might as well love them. Right. That, 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 that. <laughs> And 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 the thing about life is is about is is about uh, having understanding, you know. Ultimately, having understanding, knowing under you know, and communication. I suppose at the end of the day, being able to at least express yourself. And if if you get angry, you got to get over it. You got to get past it somehow. And eventually, eventually, you're going to find you're going to find. You're going to find yourself at peace and at a moment at peace where you're going to go, you know what, with this, that, the other, you fix, you fix the stuff. It's, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, the differences are small and, and in, virtually insignificant. One would say, what have we got in common? How about a lifetime? How about a lifetime of the memories? That's got in common. Fuck, man. How many people you know for 50 years? <laughs> But the, the life experiences you're you're talking about two kids that that went and experienced all their all their musical experiences in in life you did that together for your the entire life not not just to mention that but it, you saw each other virtually every fucking day I, I I'm I've seen Rob ten times over as much more than I've ever seen my real brothers ever ever not not even not even close <laughs> not even close that's that's actually the real real truth because it not only is it my is is are we it, we're it we're friends that decided at kids we're going to do the impossible and we're going to do it our way and we're not going to be sellouts ever okay that that and I, we meant that and when they say that in the movie people don't just don't get that you know we did a jam at okay marty hoffman's house right and we walked out, out of that door and we looked at each other and said, hey man basically what are you doing for the rest of your life <laughs> let's go rock <laughs> We're gonna, let's go make a go of this. Like we, we could do this. And you know what? The, the difference between the, the difference between those who make it and those who don't are the people that make the decision I'm going to go do it. 
<laughs> That's what the difference is. The, one, the ones who do it, especially at the youngest age, are probably more prone and more apt to fucking get there. I'll tell you that. Yeah. You mentioned peace. And the way things worked out for you guys is wonderful. We all know the story. You guys were trudging. But you had a rare opportunity to raise your kids. You were there for the family. And a lot of rock stars or even... It doesn't matter. Just entertainers, movies, etc. They don't get. I've been extraordinarily lucky. <laughs> you can't talk about the luck about that. When you need to be able to make a living doing music, where you don't have to have have the physicality of busting your back doing deliveries. Okay, my band breaks big enough so that all I got to do is do like go into retirement from my fucking deliveries and go have fun on the road for the next fucking. 20 fucking years what about that for a fucking good ending for a story <laughs> and it's great but i always wonder about those times because hindsight's 2020 20 now you're you're reaping the fruits of your hard work but while you were enjoying that time with your family and working you know were you able to really have that piece of i can enjoy the moment while i'm working towards my goal like i had a situation where a friend you know very successful but he wanted to go somewhere and he has all these wonderful things happening right now with his family he made it to where he was going but he he looks back on it and he's like i, I just couldn't enjoy it because i didn't attain my goal at the time were you able to enjoy the time you had with your family actually it was it was a balance it was and it still remains to be a balancing act it's a balancing thing because you you've got to keep relationships take time and you got to put the time in and if you don't you're not going to, it's not going to work so you got to be there when you're not there so it's it's still a balancing it's still a balancing act so were, were there times that i found yes I, I to me it's been one long 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 uh, process and during it, there were times that I had to go to a regular job. But the things that, that brought me the, 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 the solace and the peace and the, the, the greatness was the fact that the band was and continued to be a real driving force. There was an audience for it in Europe like crazy. And we were able to go there. And I was able to. So th this was like, look at this, man. I get to go on free vacations, right? I, I work these miserable, bloody jobs. I'm getting to go on these amazing vacations. And not only am I be going on an amazing vacation, I'm going where they think I'm a rock star. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, it's it's Steve, the delivery guy, and now I'm Lips, the rock star, right? And I'm going to Europe and shit. Yeah, of course, you find peace in that. Of course, and it makes. It make and like I said in the movie, it makes all going through the shit. It makes it all worth it to be, have been able to do it. And the the the, ma the magic is the real magic is is that there's an audience and always has been for Anvil, and that's what it is. That's it can't be more because it isn't. You know what I mean? It's I mean yes, there's always room for 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 enlargement, but this is this is not going to be something country and music fans are going to take in or or billy eilish fans i don't think so right so what i'm saying is some will take it in because there's aspects of anvil that because anvil it envelops and envelops music all the way from the 50s to to to, to the present day there are are elements of of everything that was really there and actually particularly in guitar music the stuff that from the original from the original 50s 60s and 70s because i was i was influenced by those things and i gotta tell you man and people people musicians of my age from my age group there it's getting farther and farther in between and you're not gonna in this music once we're gone is is only going to be replications it's not going to be the authentic thing so in other words this one time deals on these on these things right so i'm here now and i'm enjoying every fucking minute <laughs> i want to shoot to the new album we'll do a quick track list and we got take a lesson go shadow another gunfight firing everybody listen to that one i'm telling you right now uh teabag don't look back someone to hate 
Bad Side of Town, Wizards One, Lockdown, Explosive Energy is another great one, people. Uh, just my opinion. The, the Rabbit Hole, Shockwave, and Gomez. To start the album, you took a clip from when Dave Grohl introduced you guys, which I love. You told the story of like how Dave said you were an influence and gave you the guitar. It, my curiosity was sparked. Did you use that guitar he gave you on the album just for that song? Did you use it at all for any other album since he gave it to you? I haven't, I virtually don't take it out of the case. What, ha what if something happens to it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do I play it? On occasion, but I to start taking it out of the country and risking, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. And even if I insure it, how am I replacing it? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it? I can't, I could, I, I obviously, if, if I was doing that, if I was playing in, if the recording was going on in, in Toronto, the guitar would definitely get used. No question about it. But what, what I, I do have, which is, I, it's funny because he, he has them too, and they call, they call, he calls them a mini Trini, <laughs> which is, it's a, it's a, 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 it's basically a Trini Lopez style guitar, but it's a small one. <laughs> anyway, I use that. I use that for all my lead guitar overdubs. It's a Vegas, it's what it's really called is a Vegas high roller. It's a particular type of guitar. But Dave gave me that guitar as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a token of, of uh, appreciation. Yeah, for dedication and to give back to where it's deserved. Um, and for some reason, of course, he'd been a fan. And how was I to know this? But He'd been a fan for many years and part of, I suppose, part of the inspiration what drove him to play a semi-hollow body guitar was the fact that I did. It's mm -hmm. not that just that Ted Nugent did or that Stephen Stills did, but or whatever, I'm just saying that, or Chuck Berry for that matter, but I'm, there, there's a certain thing about a semi-hollow that I can't, that, that if, you, if you play one and you know it, you know why you play it and you know it, okay? They're, they're a special, a very, very special type of thing to play. Unusual, I, I don't, you know, certainly the older ones with the huge, the huge massive, uh, massive bodies are, you know, not particularly great for rock and roll, but hey, listen, you know, the sound can't, is, 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 is a specific tone that you just, can't you can't hide it it's amazing it's just beautiful tone i have custom made ones like that now. so anyway yeah, yes but that's what drove him to give it because he wanted me to have what he plays <laughs> and i i understand that my sg doesn't come out i i may have showed that to maybe like three or four of my closest family and friends so let's hop into my favorite song off the album again people i'm telling you it, it is fire rain. It's to me a combination. You know, a lot of bands say, you know, we're the best that we ever are. But this, I would say, is the song I would show somebody that's not very familiar with Anvil. Like, this is what they are and this is why they're great. Could you walk us through the writing process of that one? Was it another simple one where it's like, hey, you know what? I got the riff. You just constructed like you usually did or was it one where it's like you know what i just i can't get the chorus for the lyrics right for this one you know let me, let me try and tinker with this um and would you also say is this one of those songs that you would say off the new album even though all the songs are anvil this is a real puncher that also could have been a single i would say the instrumental gomez or teabag they're the same song gomez. but it's got the horns okay gomez the horns do help and i do like the swing feel I don't know if you know, I know how to swing dance. So, you know, I can get my girlfriend and we'll get going. Sir, I always end with the most important question. What's the best piece of advice someone has ever given you? Most important that comes to mind readily. The best piece of advice that anyone ever gave me. <laughs> and whether I followed the advice or not, 
somebody said it like, hey, man, don't buy the tour bus, rent one. And for some reason, it just stuck with you. Or Ted Aguilar told me just live. Something they said, you may have followed it, you may have not, but it just, it's, it's always been with you. Like when Lemmy told you, hey, man, you know, you're going to be an influence too one day. Yeah, there, there were a number of things that Lemmy said to me. And I, that's what that's what my mind is racing through. But there, they are things that would be questionable, that would be questionable to my situation to say that I completely agree with it. I can understand where he was coming from and fully agree with it on that level, but not necessarily follow it. Like, that's why I was saying, do I have, have had to have followed the advice? No, I did not follow the advice, but it was advice given to me. And he told me never to get married. Never get married? Yeah, he says it's, a, it's an obstacle and it's a, it's, it's, it's a distraction from what you're, real, what you're really married to. Married to be your music, and that's that's the paramount thing. And it's it's actually you'll be you're going to be over to in order to have a woman, you're going to be over selfish, and you're going to be on the road. And a woman needs a a man to lean her head on. And if you're not there, she'll find someone else. Don't get married. That was Lemmy. And considering that you did get married, and your wife has been so supportive, what what do you say to the musician in that position, or even for your own your own situation? I think to a great degree, there's a there's a, there's there's a, a a huge amount of truth to what Lemmy said, because because it going after your your dream as hard and as as intensely as it needs to be, you have to be narcissistic. And that's not an easy thing for a woman to live with, and nor is it easy for anybody to live with. So you're, you're it's, it, is he wrong? Not hard, it's hard to say. Well, that is interesting advice. And you know what? That's really something that he has touched upon in the past. But to see you have made it work is, it, it is something special. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have. Lips, thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to check out Impact is Intimate coming out May 20th. And also, more importantly, coming to Vineland, New Jersey, to the Landis Theater. Guys, you don't want to miss that. It's going to be June 4th. Everyone, as always, remember, be smart, be mindful, and rock on. God bless you guys. As always, Ninja out. Baby, you listen to John the Ninja. All your ears are about to go on a vacation. John the Ninja's got what you need.